Okay, good evening, guys. Well, as I said, we're going to talk about tool trading tonight. Um, quite a well-known strategy back in uh, the mid-90s. Something that uh, is quite interesting, um, an interesting way of trading. Maybe the trading is, um, and the style of it is not applicable to the markets as such, in that the, the total trading strategy was in a different time with less market participants, and there was um, certainly these guys had a lot more money than the average account. But uh, I think that the kind of strategies, that the, um, the way people went about uh, implementing the trading rules, and that was the most important part, and what it actually stood for, is um, is it still applicable in the markets today? So uh, we'll get started as always, guys. So remember, the risk warning is spare betting and safety trading carry a high-level risk or capital with the possibility of losing more than initial investment. These products may be suitable for all investors and only intended for people of the age of 18. Please ensure you're fully aware of the risk involved in necessary seek independent financial advice. Uh, again, education only, guys. Contact the webinar as opposed to any of the moderator, notintrade.com. Content is not constitute financial, investment, or tax advice. We recommend that you discuss your specific requirements with independent financial advisor prior to entering any bet. Intrade.com does not accept any liability of the contents and accordingly during this session. Okay, so who are the turtles and what is a turtle trading experiment? Well, the men behind the idea were two guys. One was called Richard Dennis and the other was Bill Eckhart. So Richard was a very famous commodities trader back in the 90s, and together with his friend Bill, they came up with the idea that they could teach anybody to be uh, consistent and profitable traders. So very much like the Eddie Murphy film, um, Trading Places, uh, that was loosely based upon these guys. So why were the guys, why were these people, the traders called turtles? Well, Richard had returned from a visit to Asia, where he'd been interviewed by Wall Street Journal about his proposal. And he said, we're going to grow traders just like you grow turtles in Singapore. So you have to get the kind of measure of these guys. You know, remember back in the 90s, there was a lot of free-flowing free money. Um, these guys had access to a lot of money, and they were very successful in their own right. So I guess some people can say it's a little bit arrogant to say they're going to grow traders just like and they grow turtles. And again, over the years, I've taught hundreds and hundreds of people to trade. And uh, I, I started out doing the graduate schemes and picking the so-called best candidates and saying I can make anybody a trader. And it's it's probably 60-40 against, I'll, I'll be honest. 40%. Um, I can make anybody trade. Okay, That is not a problem. I can make anybody click a mouse, buy and sell some stuff, and make some money. To make somebody a successful trader uh, and a really good, consistent, profitable trader is certainly not that easy. And again, unless you give them the, the kind of backing that um, Richard and Bill gave, uh, a lot of these uh, total trading graduates had half a million pounds in their accounts. Uh, unless you can give that kind of support, then really trading is not as easy as that. But the basic premise that these guys come up with that was that traders should always follow the rules of the system. And that's something that a lot of people forget. A lot of people, when they see a trending market, will continue to buy and buy and buy, and the market goes down, and then they start to sell it. They don't really know why they're selling it, but they haven't been successful buying it. Um, I was very vocal on my opinion of the DAX um, yesterday. Um, I, I took a huge position uh, at the top of the DAX, and, uh, yep, I got stopped out. So I lost £12,500 in 15 minutes in that trade, and then the market dropped 300 points. So even me, somebody who's been doing this stuff for a long time, uh, over a decade can still be right and get it wrong. So these things, you know, can't be taken lightly. And they have to be, you know, you have to be very, very strict and very clear and concise in your rules. Because when things go bad and things aren't working for you, you have to stick to what you know. There's no point trying to mid-trade or if you've lost three consecutive trades, trying to improvise in your trading strategy. It just isn't going to work. Okay. So by following the rules, you get the confidence, and you continue trading even when trades go against you. Against you, and that's one of the things again, which is more important than people think. If you've done something that works seven times out of ten, and then you have a losing streak, in the very odds, you're always going to have some sort of losing streak. But it doesn't mean you should stop doing what you know is right. It's all about an odds, you know, the the, the long-term game. It's all about being able to stay in the game for the longest. So. There's no point trying to develop a new strategy when you are losing. I think you've just got to take that loss on the chin and understand that that particular strategy isn't working right now. Cut your size down, get out of the market, and wait till your strategy works again. It's all about staying in the game for the longest as you can and about sticking to the basic premises and principles and your own trading rules that have got you to where you are in the first place. I think that the big thing that these guys are trying to prove is it's nature versus nurture. Okay, that 
just like great footballers, you're going to get the odd George Best that are born great. But other players, you can train to be good. You can train to be professional athletes and to be great footballers. Now, the nature and nurture thing's quite contentious. Uh, and I think it's very contentious in anything where there's a high level of risk and there's a great deal of rewards. So for me, really, I would say that the nature, virtue, nurture thing is a nice idea. And it's like a people born bad or they're made bad by the situations. A lot of the time, traders can be made bad by the situations. A lot of the times when I brought traders onto the trading floor, that was the worst place to take them. A lot of um, big egos, a lot of uh, aggression and a lot of secrecy. That's not necessarily the best person or best environment to bring somebody into and to teach them a very difficult profession. So the thing that these guys had on their, their side especially was that they could have their own trading room, their own private trading rules, and it was all controlled by, by two people. So very exclusive. That kind of exclusivity just doesn't exist anymore in the markets. Everybody knows everything, and information is free-flowing. So that... The trouble is that having a great system and be able to stick to it and be able to back it up with great amounts of money, it is always going to be unique. But the free flow of information in the market, the availability of data, it just isn't that exclusive anymore. When I was back on the floor, you know, five, six years ago in the city, it was two and a half thousand pounds to sit down for your Bloomberg, your Reuters, for your TT screen, CQG, etc., etc. I get the same setup now for free on MetaTrader. Okay, I get Squawks free. I have Reuters coming to me, offering me things for free because of you know who I teach and uh, and uh, of who I am but again even if you want to set up from the very very basics these days you know you wouldn't have to literally spend more than a hundred pounds a month to have the access to the top information so back in the 90s again as I keep saying the world was a very different place internet was not so instrumental how we learned there was no Twitter there was no Facebook and there's a clear value and importance on intellectual property and ideas, how people could gain access to these things. So the idea of having a trading system and a plan and being mentored, being able to speak to somebody like me on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis, is it, commonplace. But back in the 90s, it wasn't. If you didn't live you know, in proximity to the city and you couldn't get to the live floor, you didn't know what trading was. You didn't live on, on Wall Street or anywhere close to it. You, would, you didn't know what trading was. You just didn't get involved. So when these guys came up with the trading experiment, they taught their trading system. That's like core rule. It was their system. Only they knew what it was. And they funded each trader in, you know, by, by, through their own money. You know, these guys who were heavy hitters. So the account size was between half a million dollars and two million dollars. Now, I've traded big accounts myself, and I've seen other people trade big accounts. That's big. You've got half a million dollars to two million dollars sat in your trading account for margin. You're a big boy. Simple as that buys you a lot of uh, leniency. And then again, they were protected by the trader's system. Okay, there were rules in place, there were mentors on hand, so it was like a little club. And that's the most important thing. That's what, that's what breeds success, having successful people around you, not everyone just being an individual. So if you weren't on the course, it was simple. You didn't know the system. So thousands of people, as you can understand, would applied. I'd apply. This went down to 80 people who interviewed, and they gave 10 trader positions, and they upped it to 13. Because again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. If you're a pal of these guys, you run the course. So there's 13 total traders um, in total. So a very exclusive opportunity, and it was something that if you're on the course, it had intrinsic value. And I could certainly say from my personal experience when I was a graduate at Revco, there was a similar thing. Um, there was me and 20 guys that battled out for the money. And, uh, you know, yeah, we got large accounts. And, um, you know, the, the, these days have just they've just gone by. These things just don't happen anymore. When I started trading, I was throwing around 10, 15, 20 DAX in the futures market. And I was a brand new trader. I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest. But these opportunities, few and far between. So if you can get them, you know, you really have to hold on to them with both hands. And, you know, that's why all these total traders became so successful. So it was a complete trading system, okay? So it was a complete scenario, and every eventuality was covered, every aspect. There was nothing, no decision, nothing left just to the uh, the, the trader to, to kind of just try out, to experiment with. There was a rule for everything. There's no coincidence when we talk about trading success. We have the same phrases and characteristics time and time again. So successful tr for, uh, traders follow and understand the rules. 
when training's not going well, they still stick to the rules, but have an understanding to cut the size, okay, and use uh, an intelligent way of, of entering the market. Um, uh, success comes from the confidence, which turns, and again, from following the rules, having a plan, having an account which makes you money. And again, it's the core principles that keep getting drummed into you time and time again. If you follow these rules, even when I said, again, that these, 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 you're having a bad time trading, it doesn't really matter that you're having a bad time trading because you know that the majority of the time you're going to win. So as long as you don't wipe out in the one or two bad trades, you know the trading system's going to kick in. It's reassuringly um, supportive and profitable. So when you do start to make money again, you quickly make back them losses. So the main components of the trading system were these. Okay, there were six main points. So the markets. So they tell you, uh, they give you a system of what you should trade and also why. Okay, there's a clear reason why they traded the markets they did. They mainly stuck to the futures markets and in commodities. Okay, the positions. So what size you should use. And again, they explain why you should use the size. Entry points, when to enter the markets correctly. Stops, when to exit a losing trade. And uh, exit points, when to exit a winning trade. And then how to buy and sell. So the market. So just like everybody else, we choose what products we wish to trade. And that can be based upon our personalities, our risk strategy, what we're interested in. There's lots of different ways of engaging with the markets and understanding why you should trade things. So if you trade too far, few markets, you're not going to get enough trends. But again, you don't want to tra over trade in low volumes because then you won't be able to cover your margins and you're going to spread yourself too thin. So the turtles tra uh, traders basically concentrate on the futures markets. So that's something that's commonplace these days. We all trade in the futures markets. We can all understand why that's uh, such a, a liquid market and why we should get involved. But back in the 90s, not so much. And again, because Bill was such a big commodities trader, they stuck to things they knew. Okay, so the commodities, anything from soy to pork bellies to oil uh, to gas, all these things um, were, were quite, even now, to be honest, I'll never trade oil. Um, when I managed the Fort Snyders, um, the only oil traders I ever managed were in a team. So they were always um, arbing uh, and taking positions against each other. I would never, ever trade oil outright. But again, this is where people get their edge. You have the confidence, you have the understanding in the market. And you've got to be able to make money. So the turtle, turtles and, 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 the, and the mentors developed a system all around the market that, that A, they understood, and B, they knew that with the, the size and the volume and the, the, the power they could command, that they were going to have that edge. So that's what was really, really important. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You've got a load of guys doing the same thing and consistently making money. Then it's not really going to be hard to get that edge and to take the money off other people in the markets that are not not as prepared and also not quite as uh, innovative as the turtles were. So obviously the different markets we can trade, we all know about the futures, we all know about the um, commodities markets. So the Chicago Board of Trade, what they mainly trade was things like the 30-year Treasury bonds and the Tino, the 10-year. Then you have things like coffee, cocoa, um, you have the Swiss franc back in the day, again, there was no euro, so there's individual currencies. So they're not commodities, but these are the other things they could dabble in if they saw the right kind of trend. Then there's gold, silver, copper. Remember, the markets back in the day were very, very different. A lot of the markets have merged these days, so they're all under a big umbrella of one big exchange. But back in the day, you could do a lot more arbitrage. You can take prices between different, um, di different markets and different uh, liquidity providers. And that's something that the turtles really kind of jumped on, especially if you traded the cash market against the futures market. And without the aid of um, electronic trading being as prevalent back in the mid-90s, again, you could use brokers to lean on prices and to get big size off. So these are all things that made the turtle traders very, very successful, but they had a lot of things at, at their disposal. They didn't just have big accounts, a good trading plan. They also had... The, the, the right kind of surroundings, okay? They had the right kind of market conditions where that they could do a lot with the size and a lot with their connections, which, which really mean they could get away with a lot more than the average trader. So the markets today, we know, we can trade any kind of stock indices we want and we can trade the cash market or the futures. 
to anything from the FTSE to the Nikkei. So no, there's no, uh, I mean, it's been public knowledge that the Nikkei has been on a, a six-month bull run and they lost 7.5% yesterday. Okay, did people know that was going to happen? I did. Did I make any money from it? No, I didn't. But, you know, these things happen. But it's all about being prepared for these big events and being on the right side of it. Okay. So individual shares, again, every indice is made up of individual um, quoted shares. So the FTSE 250, 100, the 100 top leading co uh, companies, uh, top uh, 250. Again, we're a part of that. Uh, BWIN Party owns Intertrader. So we are part of a, a FTSE 250 listed company here. Um, then we can trade things like commodities. Obviously, we've heard of Brent, silver. So what we're, what we're trying to say is that we've got the same ability as the turtles did back in the day to pick commodities, to pick futures of commodities, and that's what they specialized on. But if we're going to do a similar kind of strategy and, and pick out what's right for us, what's right for our risk exposure and how we want to approach the markets, we have a lot more choice these days. So you have to be clear and concise that there's no point trading at the FX market and then trading gold. Because if you're trading a lot of things paired against the dollar, then everything you trade in gold, you're going to be too dollar exposed. So it's having the right kind of balance and the right kind of understanding of what's moving and why. Things go in cycles. So we have to understand what the markets are available to us are and pick out what's going to suit our kind of strategy. Then again, we can trade interest rates and bonds. So something else that we try and shy away from. But there was a lot of talk about the Uribor and the LIBOR rates. So maybe these are things that are going to come back in fashion. They're the more transparent. Then we have the Bund, the Bobble, the Gilt, the Schatz, all big German bond markets that are there to be traded. So again, when we look at the things that are offered by Intertrader, we're, we're lucky. We have tight fixed spreads. So that's something the Turtles didn't necessarily have to worry about. They were really in market access, and therefore they could lean on each bid and each offer, and were almost in their own right market makers. But if you're looking for something to trade yourself, Maybe you want to stay away from things like Brent okay, and gold, things with a high spread, and trade things that are smaller, okay, that require a smaller margin. If you're trading with a much smaller account than half a million dollars, which was the minimum for a turtle, then you have to understand that if you're trading three or four products, then your margin is going to be eaten up quite quickly. So pay attention to the spreads. Pay attention to the rules of the game that you're playing in. Okay? We don't have half a million pound counts. We don't have the mentors, we don't have the backup, we don't have the futures markets being fairly exclusive. So we have to understand what we do have. We do have tight fixed spreads at Intertrader. We can trade pretty much any product imaginable, but we have to trade it in the right way. So position and sizing. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated, and we're going to the nitty gritty of what it is to be a total trader. Okay, so you have to bear with me. These aren't my strategies, and again, I can only explain it in the best way I can as an interpretation of what the guys were taught. So Turtle has used a position sizing algorithm that's very advanced for its time, not so much now, but it was back in the day. Now it normalized the dollar volatility of a position by adjusting the position size based on the dollar volatility of the market. Okay, so the constants there is that always trading things that are traded in dollars, like I said, all the pork bellies, gold, um, Brent, all these things are traded in dollars, okay, because the commodity markets generally are. So they understood what was happening in their markets, normalized by what was actually happening in the dollar. Right? So you've got to, that, that's the fundamental basis. So they call this volatility N. So N, when we talk about their formula, is the 20 day moving average, exponential, of the true average range, which is then referred to as ATR. So again, ATR, average trading range, is, is something we should all know about now. That's something that's available on most charting packages and MetaTrader, and that's something that a lot of traders use. So they develop their own thinking and own logic behind the average trading range, and they based it upon a 20-day exponential moving average. So N, again, represents the average price movement of a particular market in a particular day. Right? So we're starting to build up what these guys thought. How much a product would move in an average trading day based upon the movement of the dollar? This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So position and sizing, they saw the true range okay, as the maximum H minus L, H minus PDC, PDC minus L. 
right? Sounds complicated, but if you break it down, okay, H, current high, L, current low, PDC, previous day's close, okay, so not that difficult. High minus the low, okay, and then the high minus the previous day close, yeah, and then to compute the N, okay, that volatility is the 19 day, so the 20 day moving average apart from the current day times the previous day's N, the volatility of the previous day plus the average trading range over 20 periods. So remember, PDN, previous day's volatility, that N, then TR, the current day's true range. So basically what they're doing is they're taking the high, the low, the previous day's volatility, they're dividing it by 20 days in order to see what will happen today based upon yesterday's volatility. Okay, so we can use different things these days. We don't need to have these complicated or seemingly complicated um, algor algorithms. We can just look at the spread you're paying versus the average tra trading range. Okay, see if you're trading with the value or extremes of the current range. So since the formula requires the previous day's volatility, that N, the value must start with a 20-day simple moving average of the true range of the initial calculation. So they were really normalizing the data and understanding what happened in the true average trading range where the value was. So we don't talk about things in, 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 in ATRs really at these days. We talk about value where the market traded. And that's going back to your candlesticks where we see the red bodies, we see the green bodies, where people have found value buying and selling at prices. So all we're trying to do with this particular algorithm, the turtles, what they're trying to do, is find out what the high that was, the, what the low was, based upon the previous day's volatility, and then applying that to the potential movement of today's market. That's all they're trying to do in that formula. So again, if you want to look at it in your candlestick formation, then it looks like this. Okay, so the example is that A, is a small, yeah, high-low range formed after a gap. The true range equals the absolute value of the difference between the current high and the previous close. So example B, is a small, high-low range formed after a gap down. <clears throat> the true range equals the absolute value of the difference between the current low and the previous close. So example C, even though the current close is within the previous high or low of the range, the current high or low range is quite small. In fact, it is smaller than the absolute value of the difference between the current high and previous close. Okay, so we remember, guys, this is the total trading strategy. It was never going to be simple. But if you're looking for the true range, okay, it's not, they're not calculating it between the high and the low. Okay, that's the, that's the full range of the day. What they're the calculating it is, is between, okay, the difference. So it's the difference between, um, the, the, the values of where the market is actually finding value. So it means that the actual true range of a market is always going to be a lot smaller than the actual full range. That goes without saying. So that's where the value is. No one is finding value on the extremes. Okay, up here there was no value in the market, but there's value between the close in B, okay, and the market moving down. So there are different strategies. I mean, again, um, John, I think he's here today, he actually sent me an, an email today about the, um, the MetaTrader turtle trading strategy that you can overlay. And that basically just puts an arrow, okay, at the high and low of this true range. That's all it does. So it's saying that, you know, forget about the high, forget about, you know, the, the body of the candles. It's all about the gap between it is the actual true range where people want to get involved. So when you're trading in the next day, you want to be looking at the high and low of the true range of what could be the extremes of the market. Okay, the bigger the true range, the more volatile the market's been, the smaller, the more likely it is to break out of them ranges. Okay, so that's all it really means. So the calculations were made um, as commodities were and still are, susceptible to market gaps. There's a lot more market gaps back in 1995 because there was less people trading the markets. Okay, when markets closed, there was no overnight trading and there was nobody to, to seize upon these gaps. So that meant that the traders were more suited to trading, you know, these gaps and these, and these big bits of volatility and being able to fade them out because there was nobody to go into the markets to close the gaps and find value. So when you have big gaps in the market, it's a lot harder to find true value than, than these days. And that's why the total trading system isn't quite 
as um, efficient in today's markets because you very rarely see gaps. Every time you see a gap on Sunday night in the trading, it generally gets closed. But when you're trading back in 1995 in the commodities markets, there was gaps every day. So that's why it was so important to find the, the true range because the average range was so full of noise and gaps that you needed to kind of filter them out. But these days you don't. So I'd say that apart from big fundamental news and like big moves that happened in the stock yesterday, you're not going to see too many gaps. But I would say if you want to deal with that volatility and, and, and look at it in a better way on your charts these days, then you look at pivot points. Look at pivot points or Bollinger Bands or your moving average. They will tell you the same things as an average trading range, to be honest. So the importance of position and sizing when it came to the total trading was knowing how much to put in the markets. Now again, when you're trading a half a million accounts, you don't just trade one lot. Okay, so they had strict and very understand un, under very very strict, but they understood the rules of the game. So you don't just put one lot on. There's a certain amount of you put on each trade based upon each level. Okay, so the diversification is achieved by spreading the risk. So they're trading always trading different markets at the same time. So they'd know what was similarly correlated and what was inversely correlated. And they'd also know the volatility of how far each market could move. So diversification is difficult if you don't have sufficient capital. Okay? It's difficult enough for a £10,000 account to, to spread enough risk along, across one product. So when you're trying to do it against five or six markets at the same time, your capital quickly gets eaten up. So if you're trying to hedge, trying to arb, it becomes very, very difficult. So having a strategy for trading and also trading closely correlated markets, like if you're trading gold and silver or heating oil versus crude oil, it's a lot easier. Okay, But again, the turtles knew this, so they had four different levels of what size they were meant to use and how aggressively they were meant to trade. So they traded just one market, they'd only ever trade four lots. If it was a closely related market, six lots. Loosely correlated market, ten lots. And single, one off, short or long, they trade a maximum of twelve lots. Okay, it doesn't sound a lot, but if you're trading, you know, four, five, six markets at a time, that soon adds up. So your entry. So many trading systems, people believe that the entry point is the most important part of the system. That was no different than the turtles themselves, but they had two different ways of entering the markets. So the first one was a short-term trade based upon the 20-day moving average breakout, and the second one was a, a simpler, longer-term uh, breakout based upon the 55-day. So when we talk about 20-day and 55-day moving averages, these aren't groundbreaking strategies. Okay? That on themselves is a fairly basic and fundamental way of viewing the markets. So their entry okay, is a system revolved around breakouts rather than coming back into the range. It was easy to spot clear signals and enter the markets. So breakout, as we know, is when a price exceeds a high or low of a particular number of days. So they were looking at a 20-day breakout happening when we break a new high or low of the previous day based upon a 20 day moving average. So that again, very, very uninteresting in, in, a, in a trading strategy. But the way they did it and backed it up with every other rule was the part that made this system so important and so uh, successful. So supporting indicators have been used today's market to identify trends. It, it, it's key levels, support and resistance I talk about all the time, points of interest, trend lines, trend channels, okay? These guys didn't pay so much attention to the candlesticks as we do today. But we can get, get, gain all this information just by overlaying Bollinger Bands, simple trends, and understanding candlestick formations. So stops. Now, stops are a, a very important part in trading, and it's, it, it's clear to say that there are a very old saying that was taught to me by some much smarter traders. That there are old traders and there are bold traders, but there are no old bull traders. So that just means that you can be balls out and you can be very, very confident, but how many times is that going to work out? You need to be smart, you need to be consistent, and you need to be prudent. Okay? And again, I've proved that myself. You know, I make consistent money in live trading sessions and pretty much gave 60% back in one trade, even though I was right. But again, I've earned that right. It's my money. I could do with it as I please. Would I rather have that money in my account? Of course I would. But that's the way I trade. Lots and lots of consistent trades and winners. One fairly big loser. You get back on the horse. You know what works for you and you carry on. Okay? These things happen. So for most people, it's easier to hold on to a losing trade and hope that the momentum turns around than it is to get out for a, a losing trade. Not the case with the turtles. 
they knew exactly when to get out and it was very very important that they got out because if they didn't the trading system would just simply not work so the turtles needed to trade large positions and they didn't want to reveal the strategies with order, orders being held with brokers so they predefined levels in order to get out so they were always watching the markets so they put stops in but they were more physical defined stops of, of points in the market they knew where they had to get out and that's the way I trade okay you have to have the mental strength and discipline to get out of the markets when you know that you're wrong there's no point holding onto a trade when it's not and just hoping it'll come back and well, that's not trading so the turtles place their stop based upon their position risk so no trade very much like any trading strategy that you can find on the internet although we've talked about in different seminars no trade can incur more than two percent risk so very very simple to calculate so as one n explaining the calculation risk represented one percent of account equity then they can never risk more than two percent of their capital on any one trade makes sense so in order to keep the total positions and risk to a minimum uh, if any additional units were added to the trade, so they negatively or positively they averaged, then the stops were, were again increased in units by half an N, so that every time that they had to move or put into a position, the stop would be calculated uh, at an extra half percent of that daily N, that daily risk of the average trading range. So two times the volatility of the average move was the overall stop of that trade. They did have a, an alternative a method which was called the whipsaw and that's something that's you know seen a little bit more actively in the markets these days but the turtles were told an alternative stop strategy could result in better profitability but it was a lot harder to execute because it then came with greater losses so that meant that the win loss ratio was lower but again with more risk comes more potential profit So instead of taking 2% on each trade, the way the whipsaw strategy worked was stops were placed half an N for half a percent of account risk. Okay, so it becomes a little bit more complicated. So a given trade was stopped out, the trade would be re-entered if the market reached back to that original entry price. So that's whipsaw, the market comes back you know, to your stop, comes back to your entry. So all you're doing is adding as that market goes against you, comes for you expecting the trade to be right overall but each time taking a small amount of your trade but increasing the risk every time that happens okay so when you're right you've got the same amount of size you would have averaged in to that price going forward in your direction but if it was wrong your entire trade goes against you and again if you're fundamentally wrong in that trade then you're going to incur a bigger loss So the exit strategies, there are two defined exit strategies again. So for the 10-day low on a long position and a 10-day high on a short position, all positions will be exited. Okay, The price went against a 10-day breakout. So again, that's just to do with their entry point. It was all to do with the 20-day or 55-day moving average break. But once we hit the highs and lows of a 10-day period, that's when the positions were got out. That was their exit point. Okay, The system two was a little bit more... Uh, reliant on the 20 day high or low so giving the position much more time to breathe but again it's a defined period many times when people say they get out of trades too early because they get out in a 15 minute candle or they don't let the market do you know trade for it as long as it needs to like three hours we saw 200 of trading um, in the three hours of trading where the markets broke yesterday it was just three solid red candles okay but you had to wait the three hours to get the full extent of the move you're just trying to take your profit after 15 minutes. The market can't possibly move enough in 15 minutes for you to maximize your potential. So tactics. So the basics Turtle stuck to was that these six core rules that held the strategy together. So buying to strength, selling to weakness, as we all try and do. We just look at that these days. We're looking at the RSI. So the signal came out uh, once. They were always bought into a market strength and sold into corresponding weakness and again do the same in other correlated markets if gold's going to go down aggressively the likelihood is silver and other base metals will so be aware of rolling contracts not so much something we have to worry about these days but when you're trading commodities market you know they are deliverables so if you know you don't want a pallet of gold turned up to your house then you don't want to roll over contracts because you don't know where people are going to liquidate <clears throat> and again the rules are that herein uh, don't seem to be very complicated 
but it's all these different things coming together. That's what's complicated. That's what's difficult to do, doing certain things in a regimented way in simultaneous fashion, having the same rules in different products, understanding the correlation, and still understanding that formula between you know the 20-day uh, breakout and today and yesterday's moving average or the average trading range and where we're trading in corresponding value today. So all these things seem a little bit redundant these days, but they're not. They're just viewed in the markets in a, in a, in a simpler, more determined, better way. And four, trading is all about being prepared and having a system that's methodical but clear in entry and exit. Nobody in the total trading system was winging it. They had an outcome, they had an idea and an understanding of why they did everything. The trading with the system gives you confidence. There's nothing worse than um, an unconfident trader. They're a very sorry sight. But if you continually make good money and have a few wipeouts, a few losses, but the majority of the money is made in the system, why wouldn't you trade it? Okay, John's asking a question. Steve, why did the total system come public, issuing the current best systems and all that public knowledge? Well, there's a couple of reasons why the total trading system became public. Um, a couple of the original turtles uh, broke their contract and actually published books about this, the, um, the subject. And also, as I've said, there's no protection on IP these days. Everything and everything seems to get out, unfortunately. So information is as, as powerful as it ever has. But when there's a money to be made out of it, then people will break this. and It will become com common knowledge. But the way the guys traded is unique. The way they were, had their system, the way they traded things in correlation, the way they had, they had their mentors, the amount of money they had, is fairly unique. I could start a, a total trading system myself tomorrow. I could get 10 guys, you know, I could give them some money each, and I could make them follow my rules. And as long as they did that, they'd have a good success rate of being profitable. Would people be able to figure out how I did this? I'm, I'm pretty sure they would. There's no secrets in the market. There's no guaranteed strategy, as we know, John, for making money. There never has been, never will be. The basics that I keep teaching are be prepared. Have an understanding of how you interact with the markets. Have an understanding how you feel, how the market works for you. These are the things that are going to make you money. Okay? There's no guaranteed strategy. There's nothing out there that will guarantee to make you money. But it's this regimented way of approaching the markets and keep doing what you know works. Don't just say, well, the last 10 trades have made money. I've broke, you know, when the Bollinger Bands have closed above the upper end Bollinger Band, made a higher high, I've then sold back into the range to the 50% retracement. Don't just then say, right, well, that's worked 10 times out of 10. So next time it breaks out, I'm going to put my entire account on and, and buy into that break and think it's going to make, you know, a point higher high. The fact of the matter is, turtles weren't experienced traders. They just did what a very successful trader knew worked, and they did it in a pack mentality, in a group. And that's what made it successful. Not the fact that these were individually great traders, the fact that they were sticking to a commonality and they had somebody to back them up. That's what makes successful traders. But we don't have that. We're individuals. And that's why we have to be more reliant on our plan, our rules, and what we understand. We can't have somebody do it for us. Okay, guys, well, that's pretty much my insight to the total trading system. Uh, as John said, it's, it was very, very secretive for years, but I, had, I did all my research off the internet and through speaking to other traders that actually knew turtles. I never knew them myself. I'm not that old. But um, these guys made a lot of money, and you, you can wiki them. You can search for any of these guys. It's all common knowledge now. But all, all, all that was complicated back in the day was their understanding of the average trading range and having such strict and defined entry and exit triggers. So we can all have that now. Yeah, we can have that based upon Bollinger Bands, moving averages, uh, pivot points, or just key levels of support and resistance. These are common knowledge in the markets now, but they, they weren't back in the day. And that's why I'm a little bit skeptical about things like the total trading system, because I'm sure if I had half a million quid in 1995, I'd be a millionaire or whatever. You know, I'd be a more successful trader than just having my own money and trading that in the markets. But again, these things are to be learned upon and, and to be respected. If, if, if these guys made their money from following rules and having this backing, then who are we to say what's right or wrong? We can all have them rules. We can all have that understanding of how we get in and when we get out. But as I keep saying for the Trade for Life course, 
the, the psychology course, everything I've ever brought to you guys over the last two, two, you know, two and a half years, it all based down that you have to have your own trading plan and your own strategy and stick by it. If you don't, then you won't succeed in trading. And that's all the turtles did, guys. Stuck to the rules, even when it wasn't working for them. Okay, guys, well, that's an interesting, it's a bit of a, a bit of a more of a thinking um, seminar tonight. Uh, you know, again, if you want to go back and take the total trading system, break it down, use the average trading range, and use the, uh, the 20 and 55 day breakout as your trading method, go for it. Will it, will it work in the markets today? I don't know. If you want to search for the um, total trading MT4 plugin, you can have that. You can absolutely have that. That's available for, for everybody to uh, to take on board. But really, you know, total trading system is, is quite simply based upon 20 and 55 day breaking breaking out momentum and, and knowing when to, to stop out and take your profits and trade correlating markets heavier with more size than you would do inverse traded products. Okay, uh, I've got Gary and Angie saying that it wasn't what they were expecting. What, what were you expecting from the uh, the seminar tonight on total trading? You want to type into the, the chat window? I'm always interested to see. I don't think I ever get, um, and not what I was expecting. I certainly never, don't ever get two. Any other thoughts or comments, guys? You know, again, put them down in the chat window. Always open session these. So I'm always happy to to understand what you guys are looking for. So showing charts and breakouts, uh, where and when you would exit. Okay, Angie, well, I do that in my trading clinics, okay, that you can see on FX Street or Investing.com every week. This is the, the theory of a trading plan uh, and a theory of a, a total trading strategy. Um, it did it, take two hours, three hours to go through chart examples and to absolutely explain it, to be honest. We just don't have that time. That's why I hold um, trading sessions in live, real conditions. Okay, Diana, why do gaps get filled even if there's good new, news or bad news on stocks? Gaps get filled because people in the markets don't like gaps, Diana. It's as simple as that. Gaps, um, because there's automated trading systems, because there's a lot of people that automated trade, that's a gap in the data. People can't have gaps in the data when they run automatic strategies. So the likelihood is they generally get closed in order to make data clean and the charts and the markets behave more rationally so that's why the majority gaps get closed yes traders don't like to chase yeah absolutely but gaps you can look at the Sunday night gaps it's quite a, an interesting phenomena but um, when there's been overnight news in over the weekend or late on a Friday when the markets open uh, at 10 o'clock on the Sunday you will generally see gaps and I'd say 97 times out of 100 they generally get tested or closed because the market doesn't like holes in data just like holes in understanding, so they generally get closed. Okay, guys, well, lots of more trading sessions coming up. Remember, we've got non-farm payrolls not too far away. Uh, that's not going to be an intertrader. That's going to be an investing.com, guys, so make sure you look out for that. There will be an email to remind you. Um, we're up quite good money in the last two non-farm payrolls, and I think this is going to be some key data. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if the, uh, if the, um, the markets now stall and have a correctional phase, or this is just a, a big profit-taking exercise, and the market's rallying and make some higher highs. Okay, guys, well, great to see you as always. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm sorry to, um, to Angie and Gary, it's not quite what you what you're expecting, but you know the, these things do happen. We can go through some charts in my live trading clinics, of course. Um, and again, they're held every week, twice a week, so you can always join in on them. All right, guys, well, thanks to the rest of the guys for, for attending. It's been a pleasure tonight, and uh, I'll see you all very soon. Okay, guys, have a great night. Thank you.